So 5.3, number 59, we are given information on top. So we're given the integral from one to six of f and of g, four to six of f and one to four of g. Now we want to figure out all this stuff. So part A, we learned we can split this into two separate integrals. So that's what we're gonna do. So four to six of g minus four to six of f. Let's search. Do we know four to six of g? Oh no, we don't, huh? We have one to six of g. We have one to four of g. Okay. What we're going to do now is use the lot on AP test questions. So recognize we have a 4, we have a 6, we have a 1, we have a 4, and we have a 1, and we have a 6. So we have the numbers we need. So let me write this down. I'm not going to put the Gs there now because I'm just trying to save time. 1 to 6 is going to be the same as 1 to 4 plus 4 to 6. Now, you should have your g's here. If this were an FRQ, you have to have it there. But this is multiple choice, so I'm just going to kind of do that. I can do this. It should be dx and all that. But the net area from 1 to 6 is a net area from 1 to 4 plus the net area from 4 to 6. You're just breaking it up. And which one of these do we know? We know that one to six is five, so this is five. And we know that one to four is two. So we're gonna plug in a two there, and we're just missing four to six. So to get four to six, we subtract two from both sides, and we get the integral from four to six is gonna be three, okay? So use your properties. Whenever you have a bunch of weird numbers, you should be thinking it's broken into multiple parts. That's what you should be thinking. And so this first part we found is three. So that's gonna be three. Let me erase all this and we'll do the second part. So we want F from four to six. Do we have that? Look at that, they gave that to us. That's just five. So minus five, and we get the answer of negative two, and that is part A. Part A, woo woo. All right, let's go to B. Part B. So I'm allowed to take a constant out. So I'm taking the eight out. Okay, I want four to six. Do I have four to six? No. Oh my, did I miss mix up two different? No, I don't think I did. I'm good. I scared myself. I have one to four. I have one to six. Oh, I found that earlier, huh? I did that on the previous problem. I found four to six. I can't remember what it was. I think, I, okay, I can do it in my head. I found four to six. So one to six is 10. And one to six is 10 and four to six is five. So the missing part, wait, I'm looking at G, he's not S, G. So one to six is five, one to four is two. So what's missing? I need three more to get the five, so it's three. From the previous problem, we calculate that to be three. So this is gonna be eight times three, which is 24. So we got the right answer. All right, part C. I shouldn't have erased all my work. Okay, part C. Again, I have a two. I'm allowed to take a constant out in front. And we look, do I know one to four of f of x? Hmm, I don't. So let me do some work here.
So I know one to six of f of x. So I could do one to six of f. And what do I else I know about f? I know four to six of f. So I know four to six of f. So that leaves me with one to four. So one to six is one to four plus four to six. And let me plug in the things I know. One to six is 10. So I know this is 10. And four to six is five. So that's gonna be five and I'm left with one to four of F. Subtract five from both sides. Five equals one to four of F of X DX. So I'm gonna put a five in place of that. Oh, I can't. Do you see the problem? That's one and that's four. That's four and that's one. What happens if I flip and go from four to one? You all should know that the answer becomes opposite of what it was. So that's gonna be negative five. Now I'm gonna plug that negative five in here. So it's two times negative five, which is negative 10. Bam, there is my answer.